Psychotic. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In today's visual essay, we'll be looking at why True Detective is a masterclass in writing interesting characters. True Detective by HBO and writer Nick Pizzolatto is a tour de force which explores crime, psychology, theology, and the philosophy of life and living, wrapped up in a cop buddy story that spans the years. It isn't a story that subverts audience expectations or avoids many tropes of this kind of drama, such as detective partners not liking or agreeing with each other, but defending or protecting one another when it comes down to it. A police chief who didn't fully support them, femme fatales being kind of present, harking back to noir film. But one thing that True Detective does better than any other show, movie, and you could argue even books at times, is that it perfectly creates characters which draw us in, whether we like them or not. Like a torn up person on her last legs. She was just an easy target for him. What do we know about him? One way which True Detective does this is that each scene does not simply move the story forward as its prime focus. This is a common mistake that writers make, myself in the past included, we forget about the characters and just try to get to the main point of the scene in order to move to the next and speed along to that finale. But this would be missing the entire purpose and the main drive of the audience if we write in this way. True Detective, on the other hand, focuses on the motivation, want and need of the characters present. One member but many. Now, are they many but of one body? What's that mean, though? I was just trying to stay a part of the body, man. <laughs> Here, we see Cole answering the questions of the investigators, and he helps them by telling them his perspective of the events as they occurred. This is the framing device of the majority of the series. However, his true intention and desire within these scenes is to get more information out of them to help with his own investigation. And the way it is portrayed, as an audience, we aren't sure if we entirely trust his motivations, as thus far, we are only hearing the story from accounts from himself and the other major characters, who are friends, mostly. The interview scenes aren't just a device for the writer to speed along to the next most important plot point. They are there for us to delve deeper into the characters, start to understand the characters' perspective, and question whether or not we trust their accounts as happened. And this pretty much exists within each character within True Detective itself. Marty has this need of appearing to be the honourable lawman, but his inner desire of chasing sex with younger women is there, just under the surface. I won't say much about other characters, as I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it before, but if you really stop to analyse each scene, this concept is present in every single one of them. This place is like somebody's memory of a town and the memory's fading. It's like there was never anything here but jungle. Stop saying shit like that. It's unprofessional. Oh, is that what I'm going for here? And so, plot progression should come from the character motivation and action. If the obstacles that the characters face make them come face to face with their own weaknesses, it really does help to build a believable and engaging story. And it's this confrontation of their weaknesses and their flaws that also acts as a vehicle for telling the story. Cole and Marty, throughout the season, truly do face their own flaws and obstacles head on and change because of it. Every good story needs to have this form of character progression. The story progressing becomes a tool for the writer to help the characters through the unknown world. To quote Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, from The Hero with a Thousand Faces, a must-read book for any serious writer. Major character flaws become corrected through story progression and also are tied into the conclusion of the narrative as a whole too, again, avoiding that specific scene to avoid spoilers, but it is a great moment. This takes me back to one of my previous points. Story needs to come from the character, not forced upon the reader. And I've said this in a few videos now, but it's so true. If the audience doesn't care about the characters, they won't care about the story.
Another reason why a true detective is a masterclass in writing interesting characters is that the characters, especially Cole, have intriguing philosophical views on the world. It takes a lot of inspiration from the philosophy of Thomas Ligotti, again a great read from The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, and other philosophers such as Albert Camus and Friedrich Nietzsche. These heavily pessimistic and often stark outlooks on the world are often not explored in drama, as producers and distributors want content to be as accessible as possible. A mistake, in my opinion. The way these ideas are introduced in the story are mesmerising and help to build tension within the narrative as it unfolds. Someone once told me, time is a flat circle. If everything we've ever done or will do, we're going to do over and over and over again. And that little boy and that little girl, they're going to be in that room again. Again. I mean, just wow, what a way to get into a character's head, but this helps to shadow the protagonist's intention, and from the audience, or at least their true intention anyway. What do you mean she didn't make sense? Like she could duck hunt with a rake? Hi, yeah. I'm talking about she's gonna become a nun. <laughs> Why a nun? No, man, she was high. Fucked up. Uh, talking about she met a king. Yeah. Another aspect that True Detective heavily draws inspiration from is The Yellow King and Carcosa by Chambers. Stemming from Lovecraft's ever-expanding mythos, as well as including elements of real culture and belief systems of the time the show is set in, helped to paint this world full of intrigue and secrets. Inside on the floor on the right. This unique way of exploring these kinds of concepts lends itself to creating new ways to explore the scenery and locale of the bayous of America, exploring a wild, rural land in which a great secret resides, and which girls have gone missing. I think a lot of writers tend to stick with ideas or mythologies or elements of storytelling to which they are accustomed, but I've found exploring things in which you're not comfortable with or seem very different to the artistic, philosophical, social and religious values to which you're used to really do help to push your own boundaries as a storyteller and enable you to be a person who has a more original voice. After all, we all see the world in different ways. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my visual essays playlist, where I talk about different concepts you'll find in fiction and film. Some of it because I find it intriguing to delve into, some of it because I think it will help my storytelling as a writer and director. Also, please feel free to drop some support by smashing that like button. It doesn't cost anything and it really does mean a lot in supporting this channel. Similarly, share the video and pop a comment below if you have any thoughts about True Detective, detective fiction in general, or the Lovecraftian mythos, or anything related to writing, storytelling, film, and more. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. I'm aiming to get more videos and blog posts out in the coming weeks focusing on creative writing, productivity, filmmaking, telling better stories, and the tech behind it all. I'll see you in the next one.